meeting of the City Planning Commission is now in order. Uh, please call the roll. Wagness? Yes. Carpenko? Yes. Demacus? Yes. Keller? Yes. Coop? Yes. Burning? Here. Wetzler? Yes. Geinert? Yes. Barch? Yes. Bullinger? Yes. Larshus? Uh, Chairman Hansen? Here. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, I'll ask for uh, approval of the June 20, excuse me, June 26, 2017 minutes of the regular meeting. Uh, motion by Carpenko, seconded by Coop. Roll, please. Wigness? Yes. Carpenko? Yes. Demacus? Yes. Keller? Yes. Coop? Yes. Burning? Yes. Wetzler? Yes. Geinert? Yes. Barch? Bollinger, yes. Chairman Hansen. Yes. We'll move on to our first agenda item. Uh, item number one is an application by Todd and Heidi Newberry for a variance to the front yard setback um, for the purpose of constructing a garage in a residential agricultural district on Beaver Creek Estates, Block 3, Lot 10. I'll ask the uh, city staff for the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, commissioners. As the chairman stated, this is a variance request in RA zoning, agricultural residential, for a front yard setback. The uh, standard is 35 feet, and they're requesting a 10 foot variance uh, to build 25 feet from the road uh, due to topography. Put the slide up here for you to, to see. Uh, on this first slide, you see the house, and you see the proposed location of the building. Uh, it's hard to tell from this picture, but it does slope significantly downhill from the road towards the back of the house into a coulee. And uh, you can see the equipment and stuff in the yard that is probably going to be located into the building if they get an approval. On the left side, you'll see in the gray box, so to speak, is a 35, set, 35 foot setback area. And um, you can see the main structure is well back from that. Uh, but on the right side, you can see the slopes and the contour lines in that red hatched area is slopes that constitute 15 to 25 percent, very steep. And that's the reason why the applicant is asking to be able to move the building forward an additional t an extra or additional 10 feet into the setback to avoid uh, having to deal with more of the slopes than, than has to be. Uh, the the uh, property directly adjacent to the north uh, was in an April. Uh, and the same kind of request they were putting an outbuilding up you may recall and the steep slopes were uh, hardship that staff felt was justifiable it's an existing condition of the property that's uh, no fault of the landowner and it's unique at least to to the uh, properties that are along this coulee in order to deal with the topography uh, the, the uh, change in topography staff felt that uh, a 10 foot variance would be warranted here so you can see the findings of fact there and uh, the steep topography qualifies as a justifiable hardship so if you have any questions for me i'd be glad to answer them. thank you uh, principal planner lang um, at this time i'll ask anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this item to please come forward and do so Uh, just state your name for us, please. Uh, Todd Newberry. Todd. And I just need it to get the, to the stuff out of the weather. We have the building, put the, put the equipment in. Okay. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions? All right. I'll uh, ask now at this time any, anybody else in favor would like to come forward or anybody in opposition to this variance, or this item? Okay. With that, we'll close the public portion of the hearing and I'll ask the commissioners for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move we approve the petition. Second. <coughs> motion by Commissioner Burning and seconded by Demakis. 
Call the roll, please. Wagness. Yes. Carpenko. Yes. Keller. Yes. Demakis. Yes. Coop. Yes. Burning. Yes. Wetzler. Yes. Geiner. Yes. Barch. Yes. Bollinger. Yes. Chairman Hansen. Yes. Our second agenda item tonight is an application by John and Carla Bacchus to change the zone from C2 General Commercial to R1 Single Family Residential District on Centerville, Centerfield Edition, lots one and two. I'll turn it over now to city staff to give us our recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, this is a rezoning, and this item and the, the third item have to do with <clears throat> uh, uh, go, kind of go back to last month's meeting. You, you'll recall that this property in the, in the uh, ETJ was up for a subdivision last month uh, so that uh, the property could be divided into two parcels that a family member could build on the second parcel. And through that rezoning discussion, or I'm sorry, subdivision discussion, we discovered that uh, the property is actually zoned commercial, which was quite a surprise. The owner didn't didn't know that, and, and uh, staff was uh, was also kind of surprised because if you go down into the area and look, there's really it's all rural housing down there, and um, so this this C2 zoning must be a holdover from something in the past. But there's three things here. First of all, uh, the area is all housing, and R1 would be definitely compatible with with uh, that scenario. Uh, second of all, in 2013, the council changed the zoning regulations so that no new residential could be constructed in, in, in commercial zones. So it, it can't remain commercial and then be able to get a building permit to build a house down there. And third of all, the future land use map of the comprehensive development plan depicts the best use of this area as low density residential. And certainly R1 goes hand in hand with that land use designation. So this is kind of a, almost a housekeeping issue. If we would have caught it in time last month, we would have put it on the agenda along with the subdivision, but uh, we, we missed the deadline to do that, so we continued over to this month. So uh, if you have any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Excuse me. Um, at this time, I'll ask uh, anybody in attendance that would like to speak in favor of this item. Anyone that would like to speak that is opposed to this item? If not, we'll close the public portion and ask the commissioners for a motion, please. Move to approve. Second. Moved by Carpenko, second by Wagonist. And call the roll, please. Wagonist? Yes. Carpenko? Yes. Keller? Yes. Demacus? Yes. Coop? Yes. Burning? Yes. Wetzler? Yes. Geiner? Yes. Barch? Yes. Bollinger, yes. Chairman Hansen. Yes. Motion carries. Our third item is an application by Rick Hovde to amend the future land use map designation from Office Business Park to medium density residential on section 36156.83, unplatted southeast one, four southeast one, four, and Greenland second edition lot two. Uh, I'll ask city staff for their recommendation. Yes, sir. Uh, this also, uh, this project or this property was before the commission last month. Uh, you need to put on your land use hat here. This is not zoning on these maps, but it is land use, which is uh, what, what's anticipated to be the best land use category to support future development, as you know. Um, last month, the applicant wanted to subdivide two lots so a family member could build on one. And the lots on the, the left-hand map that are outlined in blue in the northwest corner represent those two lots that will be known as Greenland third edition lots one and two. They're still in process at council, so technically they don't exist yet, but uh, they will <laughs> after the, the process uh, is completed. The, the larger black rectangle is the entire land holding uh, the family in, at this location. And uh, the black rectangle at the bottom along the highway is where the, the homestead house is and the two red lots to the west of that are zoned commercial. So the whole area is about 40 acres, and any of it that's not uh, in, in lots is unplatted and is uh, zoned agricultural. And so when we were working through the, the uh, development process for the platting and zoning of the lots last month, we spoke with the owner about what future desires would be, 
In the land use map, you see this big purple swath, which actually extends all the way back to about to uh, Broadway, is an uh, office business park designation. And the family has no interest in developing offices. And again, if you go out in this area, there is across the street to the south, rural residential. Uh, the land use map to the north is uh, medium density residential. So uh, staff felt maybe the office park was really extended a little bit far to the east from Broadway. And uh, since the family is really not interested in developing that kind of, uh, of uh, development, we basically are replacing in the uh, right hand map, we're replacing some of the purple office business park with the creamy yellow color, which is very low residential, very low density residential, which is the same as what's across the street to the south. And that's uh, what the lots that were created last month were zoned and what the homestead zone. So in essence, all the property they own except for the two commercial lots are now being proposed to be amended to very low density residential. The two commercial lots can stay in the purple, uh, stay in that commercial office designation. And um, so it's really pretty straightforward. We're setting them up in the future for uh, residential, uh, low density, rural residential housing if they uh, so would decide to to pursue that. Then I'll answer any questions if, if you have any. All right, thank you. Um, at this time, I'll ask if there's anybody in the audience that would speak in favor of this item. Any of those that are opposed to this item? If not, we'll close the public portion of that hearing and I will ask for a motion from the commissioners. Motion to approve based on finding a fact. Motion by Wagner, second by Gaynard. Uh, oh, Barch. Barch, got it. Call the roll. Wagness? Yes. Karpenko? Yes. Keller? Yes. Demacus? Yes. Coop? Yes. Burning? Yes. Wetzler? Yes. Geiner? Yes. Barch? Yes. Bullinger? Yes. Chairman Hansen? Yes. And at this time, we have uh, one other item under other business uh, a presentation from our planning director, Robert Davis. Good afternoon, and uh, I want to thank everyone for your indulgence here. And also, I would like to welcome our new planning commissioner, uh, Mr. Demarcus. Actually, I presented this to uh, Mr. Demarcus earlier, and I thought it would be a good idea to present it to the entire planning commission today. I want to apologize to members of the audience that have seen this already, but I just want to talk about some of the things that the planning department is doing this year. There are challenges. Probably our biggest challenge is to update the comprehensive plan because there's been a change in demographics. We've had a big flood. There's been a number of documents that have come out with regard to the impact of the flood and how to mitigate it. We've got our changing economy, the drop in oil prices. There's a number of things that have happened. There's a number of future uh, poss futures that we need to look at. Uh, we also want to look at how to diversify jobs and investment. We have a number of defunct zoning districts that we have to figure out what to do with. And these would include areas where there's infrastructure in place, but we need to develop the, uh, those areas. We uh, have a wide range of housing that we want to provide for our vulnerable population. And of course, we want to preserve our natural resources and preserve, uh, promote sustainability and, and to promote uh, quality of life for everybody. Now, resilience is front and center in everything we do. Uh, in our vision statement is to build resilience and physical, social, and economic development of the city. We have a, a very long mission statement. I'm not going to go into that. This presentation will pretty much cover who we are, who we serve, and what we do. Uh, in terms of our staff structure, there's pretty much three full-time planners, including myself, and we have a full-time uh, zoning enforcement officer and uh, basically a part-time administrative assistant planner. Uh, some of you have seen this zoning district, uh, we brought this to you a few weeks ago. Um, it's the uh, industrial park that is a mixed use industrial park, uh, light and heavy. But we will be working on a master plan for this uh, and we'll be bringing that to you uh, shortly. Uh, we're also looking at uh, economic data analysis in terms of something called a shift share. So basically what we do is we look at data nationally and locally and then see what the advantages are 
for the local economy and then help MADC pursue some of those companies. Uh, we have a brownfield program, which is very active here. You see a number of uh, areas that we're focusing on. But, for example, we've done the Carnegie Center in terms of environmental assessment. We've done Oak Park. Uh, we're also looking at some sites downtown for the uh, gathering proposed gathering space. Um, many of you have seen these zoning districts, the R4C4, R3, R3B. These are four of the six zoning districts that are now defunct that we've got to figure out what we're going to do with. Uh, for example, residents call us. They, they see the zoning district on the map, but they look for it in the ordinance, and there's no guidelines or there's no guidance there. So we're, we've got to figure out what to do with that. Uh, we, what we've done uh, already is we have looked at the Seaboard zoning district, and we've um, improved that in terms of how to deal with alterations in the C4 district. We added some clarifications to our PUD district. And we're continuing to work on that. Uh, of course, you know we've amended our medical marijuana um, ordinance to to provide to, to allow that, and we'll be bringing forward the uh, a, new, a new mobile home park ordinance and a new landscaping ordinance to you shortly. Uh, we work with our engineering department on site plan review. A lot of that doesn't come to the planning commission, but we we look at signage. We look at uh, uh, streetscape, we look at landscaping, and, um, and we work with the engineering department on that. Uh, Lance, our principal planner, started a process called De Development Review Team, and in this process we bring together the developer prior to his, him applying for anything, and we bring the uh, Public Works Department, engineering, fire sometimes, police, and we talk about their project before any application is, is uh, commenced. And that helps kind of guide his, his uh, decision making. We have a uh, renaissance zone. We've updated the development plan on that. We provide quarterly reports to the state. And we work with the renaissance zone board to review and approve applications. Uh, we're one of 10 cities nationally that focus our AmeriCorps vistas on resilience. Uh, you may have seen in the paper our Adopt-A-Lot program. We've also did a lot of focus on the Source River in terms of cleanups perception survey and we're also working with the city manager on creating a, a centralized municipal volunteer program um, in terms of the national disaster resilience program the department worked on a 40 block analysis where we tried to identify the best locations for uh, the downtown gathering space and uh, Lance our principal planner actually drew these where we actually put together some concepts uh, the concept to the right is includes a transit terminal downtown. Uh, this is another drawing. We also tried to provide some drawings from the street where you can kind of get a sense for what the gathering space would look like. In this example, this is uh, looking at the gathering space from Broadway. Uh, we have our ecological restoration and greenway program where, where you see what's circled in blue are buyout areas one, two, and four. But what we're trying to do is not only convert these into some type of natural habitat, green space, etc., but also to combine these spaces with a proposed greenway plan where we would actually work to build uh, pedestrian and bicycle paths along the flood walls and along the levees. And we're working with the Park District and the Public Works Department on that. Uh, we've got 23 locations. You notice I mentioned that there were several neighborhoods where the infrastructure is in place, uh, but there's no housing there. So we're working on identifying what are the best locations for our new resilient neighborhood uh, as part of the NDR program. We have a buyout program. We're trying to tie into a buy-in program. So as we buy homeowners out, we can move them back into a resilient neighborhood in the city. Um, we're working with uh, the city on a vulnerable populations action plan and uh, an emergency family shelter. We should be coming before council in terms of an RFP soon. Um, we also have a center for technical education project, which essentially, essentially is workforce development that we've been working with the NDR group on. And the, and our economic resilience strategic plan, we should see um, we should see sometime next year. As part of the economic data we're collecting, we hope that it will contribute to that. Uh, although you may only see four to six items like today on our planning commission agenda, that doesn't uh, identify all the meetings and the unscheduled meetings and so forth that we tend to have with people walking in off the street asking questions. Uh, the, the numerous items that come in our DRT agenda that don't necessarily make it to this meeting, but that doesn't mean that we're 
not working with uh, residents on trying to identify their development needs. In terms of our code enforcement, we've uh, contributed to the Weed Ad Hoc Committee. Uh, we've taken a look at interim ag uses. We'll be bringing uh, a zone change, uh, a zone ordinance revision to the Planning Commission soon. We want to take a look at uh, urban agriculture and maybe revise our public zoning district. Um, and I want to thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Director Davis. Is that that's all you guys are doing? <laughs> Commissioners, any questions for uh, Director Davis? All right. Do I need a motion to? All right. Our meeting is adjourned. <laughs>